balls remain. The relentless pressure of captaining Australia in a crowded schedule of matches, constantly alternating between Test and One Day Internationals, began to take its toll on Greg Chappell. Matters came to a head during a one day fixture between Australia and New Zealand at the Melbourne Cricket Ground in February 1981. The Australian captain, as always, was the, um, the focal point of interest about cricket, not only in Australia but worldwide. But it had grown tenfold, a hundredfold, I don't know, but a lot. I can remember the day, it was an extremely hot day at the MCG and you know, in the MCG cauldron, as it's known, there's just not much breeze. And I can remember in the field at one stage feeling like we're, we're in a bloody oven or something. I was exhausted. I was um, fed up, probably. I mean, everything that was wrong about the, this new format impacted on the Australian team. When it happened, I mean, I'm sure Greg wasn't, wasn't thinking. He wanted to go off the field after 40 overs. He was exhausted. It was a hot day. He was exhausted and I said, mate, you can't go off the field. Seven of two balls for a win to New Zealand. Trevor Chappell, the bowler. Smith, the batsman. 52,000 people in front of their seats. Bowler! There you go. We'd seen what um, had happened during World Series cricket um, with... Um, uh, Wayne Daniel hitting a six off the, the last the ball off, um, off Mick Malone to just pinch the game from us there. I had no conscious thought until I looked up and saw Brian McKechnie walk through the door, walk through the gate, and I thought, I've had a gut foot of this. I just want to get off this ground. And I was heading off back to my bowling mark and I noticed out of the corner of my eye that Greg stood up and he's heading for my bowling mark as well. I walked up to him and I said, uh, how are you bowling your underarms? And he looked at me and I think the eyes might have rolled back in his head a little bit. I said, I don't know. He said, well, you're just about to find out, aren't you? But I'm sort of 80, 90 yards from the action, just sort of thinking, well, you know, I wonder what they're going to talk about, you know, spearing in the Yorker or doing something. I walked over to Don Weezer, I think was the umpire at the, the bowler's end, and I said, Don, you better instruct the batsman that Trevor's going to bowl the last ball underarm. His eyes did roll back in his head. Well, it looks to me as if they're going to bow underarm off the last ball. Rod Marsh is saying no, mate, but I'm sure he's going to bow an underarm delivery from the last ball and bow it along the ground. They're going to bow an underarm. You ever believed it? And that's a disappointing finish. Disappointed Brian McKechnie, the crowd boo, and it's all over. It wasn't the right thing to do. Um, Trevor was the innocent uh, bystander, as were the umpires and the other players in our team and the New Zealanders. I mean, it was, it was my, uh, my decision and uh, my mistake. And I can remember walking up the race and the crowd of booing carrying on, and the New Zealand boys had opened the door and they were, they were just giving it to us as we were walking up. We all sort of got our heads <laughs> bowed, like trying to get into the rooms into safety. Uh, Sammy Loxton, who was a uh, national selector at the time, and he stopped, you know, very theatrical at the top, and he was very emotional. And now he said something like, well, you might have won the game, but you lost a lot of friends and basically broke down. You know, Lily couldn't let that go. He said, ah, oh, yeah, what are you talking about? It's in the rules, you know, get nicked sort of thing. And, and that sort of broke the ice. Everyone started talking about, you know, you know what had just happened. Uh, I said it was a, uh, the most disgusting episode that I could recall in the history of cricket, a game which used to be played by gentlemen. The underarm incident doesn't haunt me. Uh, I mean, I've come to grips with that a long time ago. I mean, I made a mistake.